Thank you very much, Dr. Barron. And again, many will have questions. Please hold them. You'll have a chance to, uh, to raise them in, uh, at the end of this session. And thank you very much to our presenters for keeping within time. That was, that was perfect, right on the money. Um, our second presentation will be given by Dr. Brian Joyce from SEI's U.S. Center. Uh, Dr. Joyce is a, a hydrologist, uh, received a Ph.D. from Cal Davis, and his research focuses on developing decision support tools for water resource systems. His recent work at SEI encompasses uh, a, a great deal of use of wheat model to assess climate change impacts on water resource systems, agriculture, to design optimal approaches to meeting environmental flow requirements, and to facilitate multi-party discussions over transboundary water resources issues. And Dr. Joyce will be presenting on the intersectoral economics of water in Palestine, Israel, and Jordan, motivating improved equity in access to water. And this describes a project designed to reduce the potential for conflict in a, a region that is, is you know, inherently prone to conflict, particularly over water, um, by working directly with the regional governments to, to restructure the approach by which uh, scarce water is allocated. So Dr. Joyce. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to give an overview of some of the work that we're doing with partners in the Middle East, looking at the economics of water management there and potential benefits of cooperation. This is work that started with the Net Here Belize in the mid-90s and has been continuing uh, intermittently on and off uh, over, uh, since then. And this is the, the latest team of researchers at SEI that are, that are working on the projects that I'll describe. Uh, just to give you an overview of the, the, the water geography in the region, uh, every, I'm assuming everyone knows where Israel is and that Jordan is the, the country that borders Israel on, in the east. Um, and one of the, it, 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 the, the Dead Sea then lies in between the two and, and forms the border along part uh, of their, uh, their shared border. And it's the, as you probably know, it's the lowest point on earth. And however, the, 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 the water levels in the Dead Sea have been declining for many years now due to uh, significant abstractions out of the Jordan River, uh, which flows from the north into the Dead Sea. So one of, the, one of the, the projects that's been discussed for several years now is to, form, is to, is to build a pipeline out of the, the Red Sea in the south, uh, desalinate that water, and then pipe the, the um, the tailwater, the the effluent from that up in, to the Dead Sea to try to mitigate the declining levels there. Um, and just last month, uh, the, the the Israel, Jordan, and Palestine, the governments of those countries, have decided to move forward with this plan. And it's debatable how how effective this will be, but if nothing else, it, it's a sign that these three countries can. Uh, work together and 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 move forward in the managing the shared water resources there. So uh, we'll take that as a good sign. Um, however, the, 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 that project alone isn't likely to solve all of the problems within of water management in these countries. And more recently in the news, it, it, Jordan and Palestine are looking to Israel to, uh, to buy from them some of their, their desalinated water. So there's, there's certainly a need in the region for, for inc increased um, um, cooperation among the countries for the managing their shared water resources. Um, I'll, I'll give a brief overview of each the situation within each country and then explain how we're uh, working with them to address some of the, the management challenges individually. In Israel, Israel uh, is uh, has a has control over the 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 upper watershed of the the Jordan River, and as such, they're, they're able to. They've been able to develop a, uh, an extensive and sophisticated uh, irrigated ag agriculture within the country, and also to to, to deliver water to the, the their, um, to the people of Israel at a much higher level of reliability than either Jordan or Palestine are, are able to do. Um, and however, 
the, because of the, the constraints on the water within the, the, within the country, they, they have been a, a leader in, in the, the development of, of um, innovations in, in water reuse and irrigation efficiency, and they continue to seek uh, in, uh, innovative ways of managing their water. Uh, the situation in Palestine, by contrast, is is quite different in that that um, in the West Bank, the West Bank in particular overlays the, uh, the their main water source, which is uh, an aquifer, the groundwater there, which is the mountain aquifer. Uh, according to the Oslo agreements for the early 1990s, they have access to about only 20 percent of that, which significantly limits their their access to water and their ability to um, to develop their their agricultural and, and industrial uh, economies there, as well the the households in in Palestine are reliant on uh, receiving water from tanker trucks, which I've shown in this picture here, um, and the, those deliver water rather uh, in, uh, inconsistently. Um, or irregularly, and the water from that is, has been shown by researchers at SEI and Tufts University to be rather questionable and uh, subject to bacterial contamination. So there are serious health risks as well with the management of water in Palestine. Uh, Jordan is uh, somewhere in between in, in the management of their resources in that they have full access over the water resources within the country, they just don't have a whole lot of them. Um, they are the, among the 10 most water scarce countries in the world. Uh, despite this, uh, uh, and, and, uh, however, they, they, they're, uh, the, the pressure on their water resources has been uh, extreme. And particularly over the last 30 years, since 1980 to 2010, that 30 year period, the population within Jordan nearly tripled, uh, due in, you know, in part to uh, the influx of, of refugees from Iraq, from the two conflicts there, and more recently from Syrian refugees. Uh, and despite all of this, however, about 97% of Jordanians do have access to improved water sources, which is a significant achievement on the part of Jordan. Um, but they, they continue to struggle with providing these services to, uh, to, the, to the country. Uh, and, and as such, they're now looking for innovative ways of managing their water resources, looking at desalination and wastewater reuse. So within each of these contexts, we are working with partners there to develop tools to look at uh, the economics of, of water management. And, and, look, and we've developed a tool called MyWAS, which is the multi-year water allocation system. It's linked to the WEEP model that SEI has developed. Um, and we take into account the, the, the water sources, the water supply sources, and the constraints on, on those, as well as the value that each user or sectors of users puts on the water that they, that they receive. So what are the demand curves of agriculture, industry, and, and domestic water users? And then taking all of that into account, we use this tool to as an optimization for looking at the uh, different water allocation uh, schemes. And for example, you know, what, what are the impacts of in introducing new uh, infrastructure or uh, different social policies looking at uh, s government subsidies and or uh, how we're pricing water to motivate increased use of, of wastewater uh, throughout the country. And, and, and through this process, we hope that to introduce a more adaptive way of, of planning and also to highlight the, uh, the trade-offs between how we're allocating water. So we're, we have three separate uh, ongoing projects right now, uh, working with uh, the governments in Palestine, the, the Palestinian Water Authority, as well as the Ministry of Agriculture there, uh, the Ministry of Water and Irrigation in Jordan, and the Hebrew University and the Ministry of Agriculture in, in Israel. So we have um, you know, real, a great window of opportunity right now, I would say, because we're working at a fairly high level within each of these governments to, to move these projects forward. And we hope that uh, soon that we can bring these, these three projects together in a way that we can then begin to explore the, the benefits of cooperation. So we're looking now at uh, what are the uh, what are some of the strategies that uh, that we can look at and how they uh, 
how they trade water among countries in a way that, that produces win-win uh, opportunities. And I was uh, really uh, encouraged to hear from a speaker er earlier this morning, Ms. Petr uh, 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 our, our colleague from, from uh, CETA, who um, uh, you know, pointed out that really the, the management of the, the shared management of the natural resources is uh, a pathway to peace, and I think that's certainly true here. Thank you.